99 FM, your inspiration station. You are still tuned into the kingdom, and it's time now to warm up on the warm up session. Like I said, when you get uh, when you're getting ready to get into some activity, you always gotta make sure you stretch, do your yoga. And for our warm up session, we always just take a look at sports. Um, I'm a big sports fanatic, um, and I just love speaking to athletes, coaches, pundits, and just people who love the game as well and get insights as to you know how they engage with the world of sport. And for today, my next guest, um, you know, for my next guest, rugby has always been a part of her life. Uh, she made the national women's team in 2014, representing Namibia in Kenya. And by 2015, she made history as the first woman to score points for Namibia's women's rugby team. Uh, an injury, which we just briefly talked about, unfortunately cut her playing career short. Uh, but that only led to the discovery of her passion for coaching. Uh, she has since become a certified coach and on top of that, she moonlights as a sportscaster on NBC's Absolute Rugby Show. And it is my absolute pleasure to welcome CJ Kotze to the kingdom. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you for having me. Uh, it's, yo, let's, <laughs> before we, we briefly talked about the injury, but before we get back into, into that conversation, let's go all the way back to the beginning. Where and when? Did your love for rugby start? Like, do you remember that day where you're like, this is it for me? I think I've spoken about this story so many times. <laughs> it's textbook for me. <laughs> so one day my dad was just on his way. He used to play for Namibia as mm -hmm. well as Wondrous Rugby Club. Mm -hmm. um, he was just on his way to a normal practice day and he was walking down the, 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 the pathway at home and he was just bouncing the ball and it just came back and I was yeah. like, Ooh, what is that? And then he did it again. I was like, wait, 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 show me, show me, show me. And then he showed me. And since then, it's just that is like one of the first memories that I had. And yeah. obviously, playing on the Hagi Gainkop Stadium at the yeah. back of the post, those yeah. kids that the commentator would normally be like, hey, those kids there, yeah. please get off. It. Yeah, that, that was us. Yeah. So those were my first memories. So it started from a very young age. And playing for the national team, I mean, you went from, from playing at the back of the Hagi Kinko Stadium to play for the national team and even making history, like I said, um, as the first woman to score points for Namibia. Talk to me about that feeling. Yeah, so like you said, 2014 uh, is when the first time we got selected. Uh, that was a rough tournament. Hey, Kenya was, mm. hey, five games and all we got was a yellow card to show. Um, so at least we walked away with that. Yeah. <laughs> and a bunch of zeros. So the next year it was back to the drawing board. Mm -hmm. We had a bit of um, experience now. We could really like... Um, find our feet we knew how mm -hmm. hard and tough it is on the international scene mm -hmm. um, so we just had another energy about us and I, I kept joking on the field uh, training I was like guys yeah. guys guys I'm gonna be that first chick yeah I'm gonna be that girl guys are you ready are you ready and everybody started joking along and it was like a nice thing but yeah. the day when it happened it was our second game of the first uh, first day of the tournament mm -hmm. and um, it's like God told me, like I'm yeah. a big Christian, so yeah. it's like God showed me, he, he showed me three times, okay, it's coming to you, and yeah. I'm like, okay, okay, and then they go in and they get tackled, and I'm like, oh, okay, yeah. and then it comes again, and I'm like, oh, oh, no, 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 and then the third time, third time's the charm. I was on the wing, got it, I normally people sidestep inside or mm -hmm. outside and go inside, I went inside and went outside right on the line, Ooh. and I just went, Ooh. and went, and Luckily, the bench, hey, the bench is like the slower players. Like, I'm one of the fastest on the yeah. team. They were right next to me. <laughs> we all went to go score that try under the post. Um, it was absolutely amazing. Such a moment. Um, at that point, I did yeah. not realize what it meant. Um, yeah. I had to compose myself. I had to put up the, the, the kick as well. Yeah. So, got that over as well. So, it's only after the game where I could yeah. sit back and be like, hey, whoa, what History. just happened? Yeah. yeah, what just happened? Um, the, the, the joking around became a reality. Hey? Yeah. yeah. And the transitioning from that feeling, that euphoric feeling of like, I'm, I just made history with my country and now I'm going into coaching. Mm. How was that transition and, and did you always see yourself as someone that could end up coaching? Not really, hey. Um, it's actually a sad story. Right after that game where I scored the try, um, we played against Zim, our mm. third game, and uh, it was on the wing again and the girl missed the pass to the back and I was like, oh, it's going to happen now and I tried to kick, so I was on my left foot uh -huh. and I was trying to kick with my right so it was in the air and the girl came from the side and trying to dive on the ball, she hooked my leg going mm. that way, I went planted? that way, yes, oh. I went to the left, she went to the right, it was just an absolute recipe for disaster, so it was just like, Tah! 
And you and felt it immediately. I, I felt it immediately. I was down on the ground. At least I, the, the best part was I was one of those players that got picked up with those little cars. <laughs> yeah. so, like they legit picked me up with that. So yeah. that was a highlight uh, in the whole depression set, uh, mm -hmm. nonsense. So mm -hmm. uh, apart from that, we got back. Um, my friend was like, okay, CJ, so um, I've got this team at Audubon. Um, mm -hmm. It's, uh, nobody wants this team. Mm -hmm. What's happening? Nobody can coach them. And I was like, okay, let me try this. I'm out for a while, so let me try this. And we started. And going from not having, being able to play, like mm -hmm. you go as an athlete, you go into immediate depression. Yeah. Uh, it triggered mine. I didn't yeah. even have, know I had it. Yeah. So it triggered mine, and immediately um, I went into depression. And I had to keep myself busy. And luckily I found the boys, hey, mm -hmm. and um, I, I went from depression to learning that I could inspire the next yeah. generation. And that's where it kind of started. And yeah. I was like, geez. And I taught myself so much about the game because they would be like, coach, 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 yeah. what is this? What is this? And what do you do here? So I had to really educate myself. And mm -hmm. at that point I was like, geez, I really have to study the game. Hey, yeah. I really have to really, not as just a, just a player, but yeah. really get to know the laws yeah. and everything. It's one of those things where you're like, you think you know the game, so you need to know the game. Yes, exactly. <laughs> so I had to be on another level. So it was pretty intense, but um, it's there where you learn how to inspire the next generation where I was like, okay, okay. Yeah. Where they look up to you and they're like, coach, 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 yeah, did you yeah. what, what this weekend? And, and I was like, okay, so this is, this is real. This, this, ha this is happening. And then um, from that coaching, right? Yes. You went straight into the punditry. You went, you went for uh, the game, the analysis. Like you said, you had to study the game. And um, it's funny how things have a ripple effect. You know, your injury kind of got you uh, started into the coaching. And as you coach, you got to learn more about the game. And now you're here. Um, as an expert of the game, um, as, a, as a pundit on the rugby show on NBC, what do you love most about punditry? Well, absolute rugby, hey, uh, like you said, it, it's, it's, jeez, oh, <laughs> <laughs> there's so many words for it, eh? Um, the show itself, like, um, I was actually thrown into the deep end with the show. It's like, mm. hey, listen, our producer's moving to the coast. Um, you're the only one that knows rugby. Thank you for taking yeah. it. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> You but start it, yeah, exactly. It was basically almost like that from from just being an assistant to being director, producer, yeah. occasional presenter. It was absolutely amazing. The best part about it is um, for people when they hear the name, uh, uh, what is it, Daryl Dolla Harp or mm. Krasander Buerta, these are big names for mm. them and I work with them every day. Mm. They're just another normal human being, yeah. a normal rugby player to me. <laughs> but for others, it's like, oh, oh wow. you get to work with these yeah. World Cup stars. And, and sometimes you take it for granted, but that's yeah. the best part is sitting uh, eye to eye with those mm. guys and talking rugby and, mm. and, and just enjoying talking about it. Mm. Yeah. What would you say was uh, has been your best experience with Absolute Rugby and worst experience so far? Jeez, worst experience was probably is well, normally when the guests cancel five minutes before the show. <laughs> Jeez, I think any producer can tell you that's a yeah. hustle, hey? Like, yeah. if, like I was in a car accident. Like, no, dude, why would you be in a car accident? <laughs> yeah. like, it, the show has, has, to, has to be done. Yeah, it has to be done, but things happen, hey? Yeah. Um, Best experience, like I said, World Cup time mm. is being able to get like the inside information, mm. being on the field every day. Mm. Like I, I, like we work with video, obviously, yeah. so we have to be on the field constantly. It's just yeah. not just a call away and just yeah. interview. It's I have to physically go and be on the field and yeah. just seeing the boys and how hard they were working. Actually, yeah. um, nobody can really tell you if you don't on the field yeah. how hard those oaks work. Yeah. Really, so it's amazing to just see them transitioning all the way from. From there yeah. onto the World Cup stage and be like your yeah. half time we're one point away from like from the all blacks all the time tension it, the tension yeah. it's insane so that's the best part is being with those guys and mm. just looking forward to seeing them every week best and worst part of coaching Yo, okay, so when I started, <laughs> okay, worst part was most probably is, is when those, those, those questions come in where you don't have the answers. Mm. Like, Coach, why did I get a red card? And you're like, mm. uh, the tackle wasn't high, yeah. but it wasn't low. It was too low. Like, how do you explain well, that? To it's, an, just a red card. it's just a It's just, <laughs> well, it happens, hey. <laughs> um, and then the best part is seeing how 
the skill set gets transformed mm. from taking you I've, I've, I'm coaching a bunch of ladies and girls mm. I've got school rugby girls right now mm. I've got ladies um, mm. talking 20 plus mm -hmm. um, 37 around about that age mm. and then I've got your school girls and giving them a tennis ball and be like okay tennis ball here play with that and they're like but mm -hmm. we're playing rugby and I'm like no 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 play with the tennis yeah. ball first let's get your passing skills yeah. right and then you give them the rugby ball and then they even see that yeah. transition and they're like you're like I couldn't pass or catch this ball now and now yeah. it's absolutely amazing so that's the best part is to see an athlete go from zero to a hero in a matter of months yeah. and you're just like you're I, I'm a part of that yeah. I, I brought out the best in you yeah I can imagine and um, best and worst thing about playing? Playing. Oh, the absolute feeling of being completely free. Mm. Um, that moment where I'm talking about sidesteps. Uh, mm. Off air, we just spoke about <laughs> like how the injury happened. And yeah. I'm the girl with the sidesteps. Yeah. Like, I love doing that. Going in the air and then sidesteps. It just feels yeah. nice when, when the other player hits the ground and you're like, yep, oh, I did that. Uh, or that, <laughs> yeah. So the, the best part is just hearing the crowd, crowd go, ooh. Mm. Or like, yeah. Or that is the best part about yeah. it. Worst part is is knowing you're out of the game. Um, mm. When when you're sitting on the sideline and you're watching them play, mm. um, even with a concussion, like I've had one of those before. Um, so, jeez, it's yeah, it's injuries. just a, yeah, it's just the worst to go and sit on the side and just watch them play. Yeah. Lastly, CJ, um, for the little girls uh, that you coach and little not the ones that you coach, but little girls out there that aspire to be um, rugby players. What advice would you have, and even just the, the young boys as well, what advice would you have? What does it take to have a successful career in rugby? I don't think there's any specific recipe for success in sport in general. Mm -hmm. I think it's just from, it differs from person to person. Mm -hmm. um, but self-discipline is such a great part of any sport person's mm -hmm. journey. Self-discipline, you should be able to teach yourself, to educate yourself. Mm -hmm. um, I was forced to educate myself with mm -hmm. coaching, um, but thank goodness for that because yeah. going into my next game, I knew better than I did ever before. So yeah. coaching yourself, learning the game, just self-discipline in your your training like I said like coaching yourself on on the laws of the game and mm -hmm. things like that so that is absolute textbook for success mm -hmm. in that and that in in my opinion yeah, yeah. Now, CJ thank you so much for joining us on, on the warm-up on the kingdom we can't wait to see where your career takes you I think it's just been like um, up and up every step of the way and we can't wait to see uh, where the career goes from here on Thank you so much for having me. That is CJ Kotza. If you don't know now, you know. Um, history, if you go look in the history books, né? history can't be, you can't rewrite it, you can't change it. Her stats are there and she has solidified her name in the Hall of Fame. Um, CJ's advice to the young uh, aspiring rugby players out there was discipline, 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 self-discipline and you can touch the sky.